on an all-new Dr. Phil. You are a man, I'd smash you in the ground right now. A wife accused. Mike is convinced I have cheated on him. You had her take a polygraph. The results showed she passed it, but I knew she flunked one of the questions. A husband obsessed. I have spied on her, audio taped her. Where's the audio tape? I gave it to your company. CBS Security remembers you very specifically and say he gave us nothing. The anger has been building. I have blamed myself all my life for your problems. Today. It ain't gonna happen no more. It explodes. Why did my son come to me and ask me if I'm going to kill you? You drug this kid into this. You drug this kid into this, and he had to hear all that. Don't respond to that. You can try and bully her, but you ain't going to do it with me here. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Ready, free. Tank. I'm going to get you the help that you need. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Get out of our lives. We want you gone. We're tired of the turmoil. Get out of here. Get out. We want you gone. Mom, get out! Well, imagine being ganged up on like this by your husband and your 12-year-old son. That's right. I said 12-year-old son because if you caught it at the end, it was mom, get out. Cindy says that's what was happening to her on a regular basis, and she is at the end of her rope. Her husband, Mike, constantly accuses her of lying and cheating. In fact, he is so convinced that she is unfaithful that last year he drove halfway across the country from St. Louis to CBS Studios in Hollywood to try to show me his proof, but he was turned away by security. Well, today he's back. This time, we let him in the gates because of the home video you are about to see. Take a look. Mike has always been a yeller and a screamer. I got the right to be angry, you son of a bitch. You're the only one that's ever made me angry. He's called me bitch, whore, skank, slut, liar, manipulator, all of that in front of my son. Two and a half years ago, Mike's abuse turned physical. When Mike gets mad, he turns violent. I'm I slapped Cindy one time after she had a butt at me in the nose. I have grabbed Cindy by the neck and just wanted to shake the truth out of her. So I spit in her face one day because I just wanted to hit her like a man. I wanted to create pain for her. I, I wanted to so bad it wasn't even funny. Turn that light on. What did I tell him? What did I tell him? When he's in that rage, it's very scary. I'm afraid he's going to hurt me. Cindy shouldn't be afraid of me. I believe a violent man would have would have hurt that woman. I'm not a violent man. Tell me that! Now, by the way, Mike is the one who recorded himself in a rage and wanted me to see it. He says his wife drives him completely mad. True? True. You, you tape that? Yes, sir. And you say she drives you crazy? Yes, sir. You seem agitated right now. I am. Just sitting across from her. What are you agitated about? I'm just agitated because this isn't the true me. This isn't the true me all my life, so my son didn't have to go through this as we did in our younger days when she accused me of sleeping around, meeting women because I worked in the public, the way she has bashed me to my family all these years and manipulated them into being another man that I am not. I walked out of the house when these situations come up all these years. But until I taped my wife two years ago on a tape and heard everything that was going on, all the lies and deceitment, you have lied to everybody in your life. I've never liked confrontation. But boy, I picked my battle this time and we're gonna deal with it for once and for all. What's that mean, we're gonna deal with it once and for all? I want my wife back. I want to get to the bottom of all of our problems all these years. Wow. You want your wife back? Yes, I do. Well, you, you're really charming her. <laughs> yeah. This is the way it's got to go down. This is the way it's got to go down. I've tried to charm this woman. I've, she's never wanted it. You never wanted my love. 
I needed you to communicate with me and talk to me. Okay, let's talk no about communication. communication. I've been waiting for that one, okay? Let's talk about it. You can try and bully her later, but you ain't gonna do it with me here. That's fine. Tell me what your experience of this have been. I mean, he sends us a tape of him, in, in my sense, in an uncontrolled rage, yelling and screaming at you to get out. Then he comes here and says, I want her back. Do you want her out or do you want her back? You're telling her, get I out, get out, back. get out. I was we hate you, you know, good son of a bitch, get out. Oh, I want her back. I poured my heart out to this woman outside of them tapes. You, do you want to be right or do you want the truth? I want the truth. Okay. This isn't about being right. This is about being healthy and giving my boy a good life. Yeah, well, and I'm going to talk about it. your boy in a minute. Okay. By the way, he's not hearing any of this. Correct. And I think that his behavior is something we need to discuss. But I, I want to talk about what I consider questionable behavior on his part. And then you tell me what your experience of it uh, has been. Now, according to Cindy, you call Cindy bitch, whore, slut, skank, no good baby killer, manipulator, liar, and another word that we're not even allowed to say on television. Understand Is that. that true? Yes, that's true. Okay, so you're saying she's the problem here, but you're calling your wife the, the, the mother of your child, you're calling her those, these names. Does that make sense to you? No, it's anger. It's the anger I have in me all these years. Okay, so. well, you're a big boy. Exactly. I mean, come on. I we, we all get angry. <laughs> exactly. But you also can ratchet your mouth down, too. Uh, what do you, does he call you those things? Yes, he has. And, and what do you do? It hurts. I mean, it's, it destroys me when he calls me all these names. The person I love. You know, over something that didn't even happen. He says you're a bitch, whore, slut, skank. Is that true? No, sir. No, sir. I mean, I am are, not. are you that? Are you some street walker out here? Are, are you doing all of these things that he's ac accusing you of? No, sir. I'm then not. why are you accusing her of these things? These are words of anger. I know I control my own actions. I'm supposed to control them. I'm the man here. Okay? Well, you're big enough to say it. Be big enough to own it. Anger didn't say it. that. I Mike said that. I own it. I own it. Then what is I my problem? I own like it. Like anger made me do it. Oh, hell, you made, you made you do it. You chose to do it. You're calling your wife these names. Do, is that she what you think of her? herself in the beginning. Is that? I'm not talking to her. I'm talking to you. Okay. Why would you call your wife a slut and a whore? Because it was happening. You she believe that's out. true? Yeah, I know it's true. Okay, tell me how you know. I have an STD. You're starting to make me think that you're losing touch with no. reality. No. Here's I'm not. the note you yes. provided from your doctor. Yes, we sir. have this. You did not test positive for chlamydia, true or false? What STD did she give you? Chlamydia. She gave you chlamydia, and you yes. know that how? I got treated by a doctor. So you had chlamydia? No, I did not. Well, apparently you did. You gave it to him. I didn't have it. I went to the doctor two days later, the same one he went to, <clears throat> and I, po I tested negative, and they sent it off to lab even. I didn't have anything, Mike. I had nothing. I can't believe you But you had it. it. Yes, sir. Okay, well, let's talk about that. If, if you had chlamydia, I'd be concerned if I were you. Uh, if he had chlamydia, I think this conversation would be leaning a little the other way. Uh, but we actually have a breakdown of how this actually happened. You went to the doctor on the 3rd. Correct. And you asked to be treated you, you asked to be checked, see if you had Correct. an STD. Correct. Okay, and y here's what you told the doctor. I have excerpts from the doctor's note. He claims wife is sleeping with multiple partners. Claims she has an STD. He has no rash or lesion. He has some mild discharge of the urethra. 
He preferred not to do the DNA testing due to expense. That's a lie. He was treated preventatively. That's a lie too. So you went to the doctor, you were never diagnosed with chlamydia. Not by paperwork. <laughs> Other than his handwriting because he played me. He played you? Yeah, he played me. Why would he do that, Mike? Because this is the manipulative person she is. So she got to your doctor. I believe so. Bribed him. That's right. Okay, then this is on the third. That's correct. Okay, but he treated you for it because you had it. That's correct. <laughs> okay, then you went and got tested for it. Yes, I did. On the fifth. Yes, I did. And you tested negative. Yes, I did. So you did take the test. I did take the test. You didn't take the test. <laughs> she took the test. You weren't diagnosed with it. She was tested and didn't have it. Now, Mike, look at me. I mean, okay. you, you can look at her and okay. shake no. your head and okay. disbelieve I'm, that I'm there's some right JFK level conspiracy here okay. to cover up chlamydia. You didn't get tested for chlamydia. There's no lab test for oh, chlamydia that, that you took. I understand took. that. This doctor's lying to me on a tape recorder also that he didn't call my wife. This doctor okay. asked You're me, the Dr. one Phil. that gave us the note. No. You gave us the note. He preferred not to do DNA testing due to expense. You gave us the note. Why would you give me a bogus note? I did not. That's all that doctor would give me. I even confronted him mm -hmm. that he tr treated me preventively on that, that audio tape I sent you. And he told me I had it 100% on that audio tape that he treated me for. All he did is showed me the microscope. Okay, where's the audio tape? I gave it to your company. You did not give it to my company because when you showed up here looking for me, you went to two other lots in town, not where I right. tape. You found I didn't now have that, that tape then. Right. You, I sent that recently on this go around. You sent it recently. Yes. To to Matt and Stacy and all of them. To your producers. I, I mean, I if we've got it, we'll play it. And, and this doctor, if he's lying and saying all of this. And it's not true, boy, you ought to complain Doc, about him. I'm not, I'm not worried about it one bit. I am complaining about this doctor. Yeah. But we, I can tell you that I, I, have, I have talked to every member of this production team. You didn't send them a tape. CBS Security remembers you very specifically. I understand that. And <laughs> say, he gave us nothing. And head of security at CBS. Where, where is my stuff I dropped off? I'm not, I, I dropped it off here. Security says the next day the police didn't give it to them. The police are looking right across the parking lot at them, and they didn't give it to me. So at that point, I was a Where's my stuff I brought out here? Okay, you're starting to make me think that you're losing touch with no. reality. No, Here's the note you provided yes. from your doctor. Yes, we sir. have this. <laughs> you did not test positive for chlamydia. True or false? Did you or did no, you not take the test? No, because he only put it on a paperwork and he didn't offer did the test and you, he just no, told me to bend over. No. Did you, did you or did you not take the test for chlamydia? No, I did not. Okay. Did you not come out here and tell me that you had chlamydia? Yes, I did. But you didn't take the test to diagnose chlamydia? No, I didn't. I took this doctor's word. Okay. You didn't take the test. You were offered the test, but you didn't take I the test. I wasn't offered the test, sir. Preferred not to take the DNA testing due to expense. Sir, this is a doctor after he treated me, looked me in the face and asked me, what name do you want on this file? I said, I want my f name on this file if you want to know the true words. I have nothing to hide. Well, she's just going to blame it on you in court. I said, I don't give a f I know the truth. I have not been with anybody. And I walked out of his office to the elevator and started crying. And I said, no, he's given me a note. Okay. You did take the test for chlamydia. I did. Negative. It came out negative, and he sent it to a lab to be tested as well. Because I wanted to know 100% that I had nothing. Okay. So, is Cindy cheating on Mike? Should he be concerned? We'll talk about that and the extreme measures that he takes to spy on her when we come back.
Cindy is a sociopath. I know she's cheated on me. I have spied on her, audio taped her, videotaped her. He would go and hide in the woods and spy on me all day. I parked in the yard just behind some shrubbery. I don't f ever hit you, but I want to so bad. If you were a man, I'd f smash you in the ground right now. Yeah, but I'm scared to f tape myself, ain't I? You need to go. That was home video of yet another fight uh, between Mike and Cindy. And I say between Mike and Cindy, uh, it's not really a fight between Mike and Cindy. It's Mike yelling at Cindy. Cindy says Mike gets crazy with jealousy to the point where he has gone off the deep end, spying on her, forcing her to prove her innocence. Cindy says she has done everything under the sun to prove she hasn't cheated on Mike but he just won't believe her. Mike insists he has proof of Cindy's infidelity, and he wants a confession from her today. Take a look. My husband, Mike, is absolutely convinced that I have cheated on him multiple times with many different people. Cindy is a sociopath, a compulsive liar. I know she's cheated on me. I'm not stupid, I know what's going on. Since being married to Mike, I have never cheated on him, ever. Two and a half years ago, I told my husband a white lie. Once I found out she lied to me, I knew I couldn't trust her. Ever since I told Mike this white lie, he's questioned every move I made. He's made my life a living nightmare. In order to catch Cindy in her lies, I have spied on her. I have audio taped her. I have videotaped her. Mike, I'm not lying. Oh, no. I'm not lying. I never cheated on you. Mike would pretend like he would go to work, and he would go and hide in the woods and spy on me all day. I haven't hidden in the woods. I've parked in the yard just behind some shrubbery and trees. He would hide in our house. He would follow me to work. He recorded my conversations to know who I was talking to. I'm just doing it because I want to get to the bottom of it. I feel like a prisoner in my own home. Mike said I gave him an STD. The doctor said I had chlamydia. When I went to the doctor, my results were clean. I know Cindy gave it to me. With Mike, I'm guilty until proven innocent. Mike hired a detective to give me a polygraph test. I took the test and I passed it. There was no deception. Mike said I was able to pass the test because I was a habitual liar and that habitual liars could pass the test. Mike even started to question whether or not our son was his. He said he didn't look like him, so he wanted me to take a paternity test to prove that he was his son. The results came back that Mike is his father. Mike has turned our son against me. You no, know, he manipulated me like five times. Okay, I son, can. that is so your dad talking. My husband has told our 12-year-old son that I have slept with many men and that it's been going on for some time. I haven't turned my son against Cindy. I actually tell my son that I think mom has a sickness. She's very sick. A month ago, I left Mike and my son and I moved out. I was at my wit's end. I could forgive Cindy for what she has done but I cannot forgive her if she doesn't come clean. I've been telling him the truth all along, and this has destroyed our family. <laughs> I don't know what to do anymore. I feel like I've done everything I possibly can, and just, I can't make him believe me. Okay, so you hired a PI. Yes, sir. And you had her take a polygraph. Yes, sir. Why'd you have her take a polygraph? Because I wanted to know if she could pass one, if she want, if she was uh, lying to me. I mean, that's what they're for. I wanted to see if right. she was lying to me. And so she passed it. Well, the results showed she passed it, but I knew she flunked one of the questions. Well, let, let me see the report. I don't have a report. It's just my <laughs> word. It's okay. something that happened in our lives we both know about, and that's the problem with this whole situation. Okay, you asked her to take a polygraph. Yes because you wanted to know if she would pass it. Correct. She did. Then you said, well, you passed it just because you're such a good liar. Do you notice a pattern that you make accusations and then when somebody rational comes along with science and says didn't happen, then you go, oh, well, there's a conspiracy. I mean, do you notice that pattern in your own behavior? Sure, that's what it looks like. It, that's what no, it's not what it looks does. like. No, that's that, what no, a manipulator no, does. No, I, I, listen, I, understand. I don't have a horse in this race. I know. So I understand, sir. It's, I, I have no investment in whether she's cheating on you or whether she's not. Right. I, I tell you, I agreed to do this story for one reason. It's because y'all have a child mm -hmm. that I think is really caught in the middle of some real chaos here. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Okay. 
But you had her take a polygraph and she passed it, then you say, well, that doesn't count. Uh, you, sh you search her things, you search her car, you've interrogated her exes, her friends, her co-workers, uh, you've recorded her phone conversations. You have hidden cameras in the home. No, no cameras in the home. No cameras in the home? Other than my phone towards the end there, no cameras do, in the home. Do you spy on her from the woods? I, no, not from the woods, from my garage. From the garage. You, you hide in the house sometimes to watch her. No, I didn't Snuck hide in the house, house. The house huh? to watch Snuck her. Snuck in the house before. I oh, have I, stayed I in the home <clears> after <throat> she went there. to work and listened to some phone conversations that she's had when she came in. And you do you park down the street and spy on her? No, we, we live out in the country. I don't park down well, the street. You just said in the tape piece in that you sit in your car behind yeah, the bushes. Yeah, but not down the street. Is I'm answering your direct question. So you sit in your car and spy on her from behind the bushes? No, in I your go yard. to the garage all the time. I just park there. Okay. That's you searched her phone times. records? Yes. And you call every number you don't know? No, I don't you call, call every up. number, but I did. In the, in the first phone bill she hid from me, Correct. I, I made phone calls. You, you called them all, and you don't just call and say, uh, "Hi, I'm sorry, I'm not sure who this is." You actually interrogate them. You have an affair with my wife or something? You. I just told them what I, the suspicion I had, and I wanted to know who it was. I didn't you, interrogate. But you tell I didn't them. Accuse, so you called you know, everybody on the phone bill on that page, of that phone bill, and said everybody. you had suspicions of your wife. No, not everybody. Well, you called one of your clients. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. You didn't know it was a client when you no, called, right? No, I didn't. No, sir. And you're talking to this client about, Correct. well, I'm suspicious that my wife is having an affair on me. Does that seem reasonable? No, it doesn't. That you call people no. you don't even know and defame her and slander her no. and put her in a bad light, even to the point of embarrassing yourself by calling a Correct. client? I don't understand why you had to lie about it. Because every time she tells you something that isn't involved in your ego and focused entirely on you, you go away. That's not true. She lied about an office party. Your definition of she lied about an office party is she told you she found out about it a few days later than she did. Correct. Okay, and let me tell you something. People lie, particularly white lies, sometimes to escape all of the hell that you're raining down on her. This is ridiculous. It's all right. Listen, no, you, listen I, I'm not some doctor that's a thousand miles away from here in St. Louis. I'm right here. You can't that. blow me off I'm with a condescending roll of your eyes. I'm not trying to Because I'll eyes. debate with you whatever point you want to okay. debate because you're telling me that she didn't tell you about a party until a couple of days later than she found out about. What she told you is when she found out versus when she found out. Okay? So I'll alert the media. Big deal. That is not exactly a reason you hide in the bushes and scream and yell at your wife every time you open your mouth. You're out of control. I was out of control during this. Day. I was out of control during this. What was this party? Was this some big drunken sex party in some penthouse no. in New York or something? No. What was it? It was just a, a group of people getting together at a restaurant and bar. I was there two hours and I came home. That was it. Right. But why don't, I don't understand why you had to lie about it. I just told you why. <laughs> Did, no, listen. I even asked to go. No, listen. I Look, hey, eye contact go. here. Eye contact. Okay. Yes, that's I just to told me. you why. Okay? You said, why do you have to lie to me about it? Because every time she tells you something that isn't involved in your ego and focused entirely on you, you go away. That's not true. <laughs> Okay, so what have you seen as you are spying on her in the house? What'd you catch her doing? I mean, how many men have you caught her with? Oh, I haven't caught her with any men. <laughs> None? No, I just caught her hiding notes and stuff that I did. That, that, no, you know, no, 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 no. You weren't looking you for me. notes. You were looking for men. No, I was looking for anything I could get. Okay, what'd you see through the window? What I saw her through the window was her trying to find if the house was bugged still and pulling out furniture and stuff. At 
I'd, I'd tear that son bitch down to the studs if I were you. So once he looked through the window and caught you in there reading the Bible. He did catch me doing a Bible you study. You harlot. <laughs> you caught her reading the Bible. I don't remember catching her reading the Bible. I imagine you don't. No, I don't. Because that doesn't support chlamydia. Okay, so you've never caught her with another man? No, sir. Other than when we weren't married. Well. I was living with her. This is a woman that was cheating on me in my past, slamming me daily on me meeting people, and she carries this for 28 years and bashed me the whole time over these 28 years and held this inside. Yeah, you seem like a real victim. Um, and you are certainly bashable with your behavior. I with my I mean, behavior. Your, your, I, I your take behavior full, is I, just outrageous here. I take here. full control ha, are, of that. Have you cheated on him since y'all got married? No, not since we've been married. When We've known each other. I think I was 13, he was 14. We have a long history. And when I we bet were it feels younger, really long sometimes. <laughs> oh, this I'll last two and a half years just seemed like a lifetime. Try 32 <laughs> years of it. My... It's so wrong. No, it's not. I know who I, I am. I made a I mistake when I was myself. 18 years old, okay? I did cheat on you. I admitted that. Okay. When I you were we 18? We split up. I was probably about 18. Okay, I When y'all split up? We, no, we were together at the time. We weren't married. We lived together. And I made a mistake. Okay. You when you were 18? I should have been paying for that. I'm 48 okay, years old. Okay, let me answer that. You made a mistake, okay? <laughs> you made a mistake. I did. And then... With you making that mistake, you blame me for that for 32 years. I named my own son after the son of a bitch. And you allowed that. I, Mike, that wasn't going through my Cindy, head when we had our kids. Why did you, why did you lie to my family all head. these years? About what? About everything. Why doesn't my son, why did he come to me and ask me at age six if I'm going to kill you? Oh, boy, am I going to answer oh that. God. Oh, boy. My son did not see these accusations all these years. He did not see this. Next, we're going to talk about Mike's desperate act that he had everyone in a panic. We're going to find out what he did as a trick to test his wife. We'll be right back. I told Cindy, I could put this gun in my mouth and blow my brains out. You still wouldn't talk. I was scared. I didn't know if he was going to shoot me, if he was going to shoot himself. Mike is fake attempted suicide twice. The first time, he held a rifle in his mouth and told me that if I didn't tell him who I'd slept with, that he would pull the trigger. I told Cindy, I could put this gun in my mouth and blow my brains out. You still wouldn't talk. I was scared. I didn't know if he was going to shoot me, if he was going to shoot himself. The second time, Mike grabbed a bottle of pills and pretended to take the whole bottle in front of our son. My son was crying, screaming, and begging, Dad, please don't do this. And I stood over Cindy, and I yelled out twice, you that son of a bitch. And Mike said, your mom doesn't care about me. She doesn't want to tell me the truth. She'd rather me die first. Well, Mike has gone to another extreme measure to prove his wife Cindy doesn't care about him. And it was a fake suicide attempt. And you did this in front of your son. <laughs> What the hell were you thinking? I was thinking of Rachel at the time is what I was doing. Oh. It was a spare the moment thing. You, you did this in front of your son. <laughs> wow. And you did it to test whether Her? she cared about you. Yes, sir. And what'd you learn? She didn't. Oh my God. She didn't care about you because? She wasn't going to open up and bring out this secret she's been carrying all these years. 
Yeah. Why did you lay on the floor? Why did you say I jerked you off the couch by your hair on the floor? No, I didn't. I grabbed your hand, and I didn't even grab your hand. I said, let's go out on the deck and talk. That's what happened, and you just dropped to the floor. No, I didn't, you Michael. You just dropped to the floor and started screaming. That is a lie. You grab me by oh, my arm and my hair. I'm having a video of you dropping down to the floor. I'm just because no, I'm don't. screaming. <laughs> Hell, I feel like dropping to the floor now. <laughs> uh, you, you say that he hid all of the phones in your purse so you couldn't call 911. Yes, correct. he did. <laughs> That's correct. Okay, so you hide all the phones, you hide her purse so she can't call 911. Then in front of your son and her, you fake a suicide yes, attempt. Sir. And this seems logical to you? No, it doesn't. None of this does. My whole life doesn't seem logical to me, the way it's gone. She says, you yelled at your son, your mom would rather see me die than tell me the truth. No, I didn't yell that at her. I told him that. I didn't yell it. I did say the words, though. I said the words. Yes, I did. To your son? Yes, sir. Okay, so you, the volume's turned down, but the words are the same. Yes, sir. Does that seem reasonable to you? None of this Do does. you think you're involving your child in adult issues? Yes. Do you think you're alienating your son from his mother? Yes. No, I'm not alienating my son from his mother. I don't keep my son from his mother. That's his choice. I ask my son every day, does he want to see mother? Does he want mother to come home? Does he want to talk to her? Have, no, he says no. I have he doesn't want her back. I have heard recently, but he has told his kids so much so many things that he I doesn't have told know what my to kid, think. What it's happened? Don't in the, let's go back to the lie about the party, it's Cindy. Like a ten -year -old why? Why? Wait a minute. No, 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 no. This ain't gonna happen this way. Why would you drag out that little, little lie about a party for three weeks and I go to jail because I give up my own marijuana because I, that one week, that one week of taping you told me my whole life story. Why would you let that little, that little lie drag out and let that kid go through that every night? You drug this, no, you drug this kid through. into this. You cannot blame you me for him your into choices. It. No, I'm not blaming you for nothing you I've done. You are blaming me. I'm taking me. the blame and I'll own up to it like I have all my life. I have blamed myself all my life for your problems. It ain't gonna happen no more. I wanna get to the bottom of it. Let's talk about the truth. first trick I played on your mom early on, it was late at night, you were in bed. If there is a person in this audience that believes that was an appropriate exchange between a father and a son, then somewhere a village is missing their idiots. Mike sent us some audio recordings of conversations he's had with his son. Now, Mike sent these to us. Mike. This Mike right here sent us these tapes of his conversations with his son. Let's have a look. All I need is that doctor's excuse. He's got it too, buddy. What, what, the doctor's what? excuse, Daddy, got to prove that I got treated for a disease. Oh, the best move I ever made, buddy. First trick I played on your mom early on. It was late at night. You were in bed. Mom started following me and bickering and bickering. And she waited till I had a gun in my hand. And mom went to grab the gun and it hit me in the tooth. No, it oh, wasn't in my mouth. Oh, it was by it. But when she hit it, pushed it into my face and hit it. Mom, you think he's that stupid to leave the ammo on a gun? No, I knew about her, bud. I handle guns all the time. She wants to go leave and go sleep at a rest stop. Well, if she's going to leave, why doesn't she just get out and go stay somewhere then? Why don't we just lock her up? I can't. I can't. She is probably going to disturb Get out! <laughs> okay, listening to that back, give me your evaluation of your parental conduct in that exchange my son deserves to know the truth who his father's been all these years this this woman has made him to believe that I didn't care or love him all his life no self-esteem she did everything for him we had conversation about it I told her I you cannot do these things so. for a kid you can't Sleep with him till he's 10. You can't I give him a shower till he's 10. The kid it. couldn't even tie his own shoes till he was 10. 
Why wouldn't you take our son to the doctors and get him glasses and let him drag it out for five years? <laughs> five years. Why would you do these that? things to a kid? Why would you say to him in front of me and to my family every day of his life, damn near, that dad only cares about himself when all I was, I was doing was providing and I've got nothing in return? I, you don't, didn't don't, want it. Don't, don't respond to that. Uh, I want to go through this exchange, and then I want you to answer my question instead of giving a 4th of July speech. All right, let's listen to this. All I need is that doctor's excuse. He's got it too, buddy. What, what? The doctor's excuse, Daddy, got to prove that I got treated for a disease. Hey, stop. <laughs> now, let me ask you something. First off, that is completely inaccurate, but uh, we've already visited that. What is your purpose in coming home excitedly, bubblingly, sharing this with your 12-year-old son. I need it, I got it, buddy, I got he it. Needs, Whoa, I he got wants it. to know. He wanted to know. He wanted me to take a polygraph test. He wanted to know the truth. So your justification for coming home and having that conversation with your adolescent son is because he wanted the truth. I don't think I come home bubbly to tell him. I don't think there was, I think there Roll was... Roll it back, Will. No, hear it I again. hear that. I Roll understand. it back. I want to hear it again. <laughs> Roll it back as many times as you want. All I need is that doctor's excuse. He's got it too, buddy. What, what? The doctor's excuse, Daddy, got proof that I got treated for a disease. Stop. Are you telling me you're not coming home saying, we got it, Daddy? I, oh, oh, Daddy did it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yes, he wanted to know. That tells me, A, you had prior conversation with him about it because you're coming home saying, I got what we talked about. I went and got it. I went to a doctor and I got an excuse. The excuse that I have right here, which says you didn't take the damn test. He gave you preventative meds for the disease, which the CDC says. So you came home and lied to your boy. No, I didn't you came lie home to my, and I lied to your boy. boy. You lied to him then. I don't lie to my you boy. You lied to him then. No, only because that paperwork and that doctor covered it up. <laughs> I can look you straight in the eyes and say that too. That's what worries me. Because <laughs> I think your capacity for insight is very, very low. Because I'll tell you, if there is a person in this audience that believes that was an appropriate exchange between a father and a son, then somewhere a village is missing their idiot. <laughs> Where, where's, the, where's the appropriate case of my boy cussing my mother out, his mother out? Why wouldn't where I is, look what he Where sees. is that at? Her manipulating him and trying to leave. Look what he sees, Mike. He didn't see this he all his see, life. You and treat he, me like and this. He would, he wouldn't would own he? up to that. He didn't see this all his life. He saw this the last two and a half years. years. You damn horrible. right he did. <laughs> horrible. Mike, um, yes, sir. your conduct with your son is nothing short of abusive. Absolutely abusive. It's inappropriate. It's manipulative. It's alienating of his mother. And it needs to stop. It's going to stop. That's what I'm doing. And, and let me tell you something. I am a mandated reporter. I am required, if I see a child in what I believe to be imminent danger, I am mandated by law to report it to the Department of Child and Family Services or Child Protective Services. And, and we're either going to get a very specific plan to get you under control or you're going to have a problem having access to that son because you are abusing the privilege. You're buddying up to him, which is a great no. popularity no. contest. But we have on tape him yelling and screaming at his mother, why don't you just leave? And as a father, allowing a son to speak to their mother in that way and in that tone is negligence. Well, I've been talking with Mike and Cindy and there is so much we've talked about, so much more we need to talk about. 
So we're going to continue this story tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be talking to Cindy and Mike about what I think needs to happen. And we're going to drill down on some more of what Mike says is the evidence he has that she is the problem. Thanks for being here. We'll see you tomorrow. Due to strong language and sexual content, viewer discretion is advised. Their marriage is in trouble. I want her to confess right now of who you've been with. I wasn't with anyone, Michael. And dads involving their child. My son knows just about everything. In all their private problems. I know you're a freaking liar! Leave! Leave! I'm very troubled by hearing this child scream at his mother. Things get so intense. She's manipulating the whole situation. She's turning this on me. I've tried to be your strength all your life, and you have done nothing but bash me. Dr. Phil stops the show. Robin, would you please come up and get Cindy? For a dramatic one-on-one. -on -one. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Both of you. I want to get you the help that you need. Three, five, four, this is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. It was a lot more than sex, lies, and videotapes yesterday when we met one of the most animated and intense husbands I have ever dealt with. There was spying, suspicions, polygraph tests, paternity tests, fake suicide attempts, and a road trip halfway across the United States to lay some evidence at my feet. Let me catch you up on what's happened so far. I know you're a freaking liar! Leave! Leave! Imagine being ganged up on like this by your husband and your 12-year-old son. Her husband, Mike, constantly accuses her of lying and cheating. I'm not stupid. I know what's going on. I told my husband a white lie. Once I found out she lied to me, I knew I couldn't trust her. Have you cheated on him since y'all got married? No. Why did you that lie to my family friend. all these years? About what? About everything. People lie, particularly white lies, sometimes to escape all of the hell that you're raining down on her. I never cheated on you. Mike hired a detective to give me a polygraph test. I took the test and I passed it. How many men have you caught her with? Oh, I haven't caught her with any men. None. Oh. Do you spy on her from the woods? From my garage. So what'd you see through the window? Her trying to find if the house was bugged still and pulling out furniture and stuff. <laughs> I'd tear that some bitch down to the studs if I were you. The doctor said I had chlamydia. When I went to the doctor, my results were clean. I know somebody gave it to me. So you went to the doctor. You were never diagnosed with chlamydia. Not by paperwork. <laughs> I took this doctor's word. You gave us the note. Why would you give me a bogus note? He told me I had it 100%. I agreed to do this story for one reason, because y'all have a child that I think is really caught in the middle of some real chaos here. Mike is fake attempted suicide twice. The first time, he held a rifle in his mouth. The second time, Mike grabbed a bottle of pills and pretended to take the whole bottle in front of our son. What the hell were you thinking? Wow. And you did it to test whether she cared about you? Yes, sir. And what'd you learn? She didn't. Oh, my God. Do you think you're alienating your son from his mother? I don't keep my son from his mother. That's his choice. No, I have he doesn't want her back. Ever. He has told his kids so many things. That he I have know told what my kids. Fingers. Let's go back to the lie about the party, it's Cindy. Nothing at ten Why? Why? Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Why would you drag out that little, little lie about a party Wasn't that for three weeks? And I go to jail because I give up my own marijuana because I that one week, that one week 
of taping you told me my whole life story. Mike sent us some audio recordings of conversations he's had with his son. He got it too, buddy. What, what? The doctor's excuse, Daddy, got proved that I got treated for a disease. Oh. oh, the best move I ever made, buddy. Are you telling me you're not coming home saying, we got her now, buddy? I, oh, oh, Daddy did it. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yes, he wanted to know. Your conduct with your son is nothing short of abusive. D did you tell your son, I don't know if I'm really your biological father? He overheard it. D did you feel that that was appropriate? Oh, no. No, that hurt me. I broke down. I, that, that killed me that I would have to put that kid through this over something like this. Have you like showed this. your son video of you guys arguing? No, not that I'm aware of. He, he, has, he may have seen it going on the computer or anything. But I didn't just well, bring I, up a I video. I can't help the situation. No, I can't remember just thing. sitting down and showing him a video of what was going on. He saw all his videotaping around the house. Well, he stars in a lot of them. You have told him that you, you trick his mother, right? Yes. Do you tell your son about money problems? He hears it. it don't have to just go directly to him. He mm. hears it. Did he grow up believing that his dad would kill his mother? Yes, he did. How did you get that idea? By her saying these accusations <clears throat> in front of him on the phone all these years I was out working. If I was on the phone with someone and I was telling him, yeah, if I did that, Mike would kill me. He overheard me. But what do you think that? a kid takes Mike. out of that when he's a little kid and he hears it all his life to this age, Cindy? What do you think speech. a kid will take from that? And say, My, your dad's you have no kill idea. Me. And this is all turning on me. You have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> um, what do you mean this is all turning on you? This, this is the manip manipulation I've lived with all my life and blame myself. Yeah. How do, you, how do you think this interview's going? Not good right now. What would Not you, good. What would you say is wrong with this interview? The, what's wrong with this interview is I'm angry. And it's what I showed the last two years. Mm -hmm. Do you think that she and I are conspiring against no, sir. you. No, I don't believe that. That's why I came to you. I want to hear it from your face. Yeah, well, I got plenty to say. <laughs> so how does their son Stephen feel about all this? Has Mike completely alienated Cindy away from her child? Uh, I would actually like to speak to this young man. Uh, he's here. He's in the green room. Uh, he hasn't been hearing any of this, of course, because unlike his father, I don't think you involve children in adult issues. So I've had him sitting back there, but I'm very, very troubled by hearing this child scream at his mother. And um, so I would like to go back and chat with him for a minute. Do I have your permission to do so? Do yes, I have sir. your permission yes, to sir. do so? Okay. Uh, Bones, let's remove Cindy from stage. You can just take her right back there because I just don't want Mike yelling at her while I'm gone. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go back and chat with him, and you'll be able to see that as we're going to swing this plasma around so you can see this, and all of you in the audience are going to have the opportunity to see it as well. I just didn't want to bring him out here because I don't think you do that with children, uh, certainly in, in this situation. I'm going to go back and chat with him, and then after that, I'm going to come back out and uh, tell you what I think needs okay, to happen sir. in this situation, right. okay? So I'll head back. Mike has brainwashed my son, and there's nothing I can do about it. Ah, I caught you manipulating me a couple times lately, and I've been getting pissed about it. Our son doesn't buy Cindy's lies. He's caught on just like I have. Mike and Cindy admit to putting their 12-year-old son right in the middle of their fights. Right now, their son is living with Mike and refuses to talk to Cindy. Take a look. Our 12-year-old son is caught in the middle of all of our marital problems. Don't you push it on me, Push that down. See what she's putting this kid through? Mike has brainwashed my son, and there's nothing I can do about it. You're telling him I 
frowned on you, Michael. It's not the I truth. got a disease. There ain't no other way. My son knows about the cheating, the STD, the gambling, the money situation. He knows just about everything. I have been so honest with my son because I believe my son should know. Our son doesn't buy Cindy's lies. He's caught on just like I have. Ah, I caught you manipulating me a couple times lately, and I've been getting pissed about it. Michael, that came Yeah, because you don't want to show your true self because you're no. scared. My mom was a manipulative liar. I trusted her when I was younger. But as I got older, I started catching on to her. My mom needs to confess to all she's done. Mike's had our 12-year-old son spy on me. He has asked our son to follow me around. He's also asked him to see who I'm talking to on the phone. My son's called me a bitch, a liar, a manipulator, all the things that my husband's called me. I'm totally devastated with my relationship with my son right now. I haven't spoken to him in over five weeks. I know you're a freaking liar! Leave! I don't want my mom in the life. My mom texts me, love you, hope I get to talk to you soon. That I don't reply. That makes me mad because I don't want to talk to her. I want my son to know that I love him and miss him so much. And this mom didn't do these things. But I just want him to trust and believe me too. Well, I'm glad to uh, get to meet you. I've been out uh, in another room talking to your folks, but we're talking about um, adult things out there, so uh, I didn't think it was appropriate to have you there, being as you're 12, right? Yeah. So you're right now living with your dad, right? Yeah. How's that working for you? It's working perfectly working okay. fine. Getting along all right? Yeah. How's your relationship with your mom? Um, me and my mom used to be really close, but mm -hmm. now I'm really mad at her. Mm -hmm. What about? Um, she left over money. She left over money? Yeah. Uh-huh. She, um said that she was going to take out her pension money to help us, and then she left. You know a lot about this. Yeah, I've been filled in on everything, yeah. practically. Yeah, who fills you in? Um, my dad, because I've been drug into it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. but How did it start? It started over my mom lying about a party. Up until a couple of years ago, you and your mom were very close. Right? You said yeah, me and you got my along mom really were very well. close. You, you, you loved her a lot and all. Do you love yeah. her now? Um, I just lost a lot of respect for her. You've gotten really upset with your mom and kind of yelled at her and all, right? Yeah, I have gotten mad at my yeah. mom. And and take a look at this piece of tape. It's, you're in it. Sign your freaking paper, Lee! Put that camera down. No, down, you agreed to this. You told me and him you would sign camera. these. Papers. What paper? You, what do you think you said it. it out? You said it. And I'm sorry to get a headache from yelling at you. Okay, so down. leave. What, what do you think about that as you see yourself doing that? I think that she needed to leave because she was causing a major problem. Uh huh. And how was she doing that? She would just keep arguing. And me and my mom and my dad uh -huh. weren't getting anywhere. And okay. It just never would have gotten solved if she wouldn't have left. Okay, we have another tape here. I know you're a freaking liar! Leave! Leave! Get out of our lives. We want you gone. We're tired of the turmoil. Get out of here. Get out. We want you gone. Mom, get out! You're seeing yourself screaming at your mother. Does that seem wrong to you in any way? It or does, does it seem justified because she wouldn't leave? It does in a way, but she would never quit arguing. Do you worry about money? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What do you, um, what do you worry most about? About losing my house. What do you think would happen if, if you all lost your house? Um, we'd lose everything. Mm -hmm. That's pretty scary for a 12-year-old. Yeah. You've seen your, your dad yelling and screaming at your mom and being really upset. Does that bother you? Um, it bothers me that my mom gets defensive because my dad starts out talking. And then my mom starts raising her voice and getting defensive and holding up her arms and knocking things out of my dad's hands. Mm -hmm. And it just gets me really mad. Mm -hmm. At your mom? Yeah. Yeah. 
What's he so upset with her about, besides um, the party? Marital problems what? and what? money. My mom cheated on him and gave him an STD. Uh -huh. And how do you know that? Um, my dad had a um, STD because <clears throat> I saw there were files of it. And apparently, from what I've heard, a doctor gave my mom a fake name. And I keep, Walgreens keeps calling the house, telling her to pick up her medicine. I just want to tell you a couple things that I'd like you to think about. All right. Um, first off, your mother and your father both love you very much. I know that. And sometimes adults see things differently. One will think A is true, and the other will think B is true. and sometimes they'll clash and and get upset with each other and and that's just what people do in relationships sometimes they have differences of opinion and i want you to understand that that none of that's your fault i understand that it's just it's really not i mean none of that's your fault and i'm making every effort to try to get that situation calmed down and um I know you're getting along with your dad right now and not your mom, and I think I'm going to try to talk your dad into handling some things differently, but don't ever doubt that he loves you very, very much, and your mother loves you just as much, and I want you to kind of be the hero in this situation and really try to get back together in that relationship with your mother because sometimes people have opinions but things aren't always the way they seem and I, I think your mom may be getting a little bit of a bum rap here and i think your dad may be having a lot of frustration here but they both mean well and they both love you very very much and you're very blessed to have two parents that care so much about you listen i'm really proud to meet you thanks uh, i am too you're a good-looking kid, and you're plenty smart so thanks. hopefully we can calm things down at home for you okay all right, all right. Thanks. talk to you soon all right what would make you happy today is if she confessed. You said you want a confession so you can start fresh. I would love a confession out of this girl. I'm back with Cindy and her husband, Mike. I have just come from the green room where I spoke to their uh, delightful son. You watched the conversation, yes, right? Sir. I wanted to hear what he had to say. Um, and you see, the problem with kids getting pulled into adult issues is, remember I said I've got two rules? One, you never ask him to deal with adult issues. He says, I'm afraid we're going broke. We're going to lose our house. Yes. We're going to lose everything. We're going to be on the street. I said, and, and, and there's nothing you can do about it, right? And he said, yeah, I, I, so that scares me. I'm worried about it. So here we have a 12-year-old child that has no ability to affect the outcome, but is worried that his whole world is going to collapse and fall down around him. That is beyond inappropriate burden to put on a child. Correct. I then heard him recite to me everything you believe about his mother. Um, and he said he saw documents and files on this chlamydia that we've got this STD. I've seen the files on it. It's there. We've got it. You know, she hit it. She lied. She used a fake name. They're calling up over there trying to deliver medicine to treat her, and she lied, and she won't leave, no, we're not and she won't sign that. the papers. That's what he said. Yes, but he didn't see the files. I didn't show him them pay that That's paperwork. That's what he, right. he yes, yes, said. But I didn't show him them paperwork. If That's he saw it. what Correct. he I heard said. That. Which, Correct. And let me tell yes. you, perception is reality. Correct. I understand that. Your attitude, I believe, is if you say something long enough and loud enough, it becomes the no. truth. But I, I'm not affected that way. I don't I care how that. long you say it or how loud you say it. You either have the science to back it up or you don't, and you don't. He doesn't know that, but I do. Um, and you didn't hear me saying critical about you, correct? No, I'm very careful when I talk to children. Um, and I, I want him 
to rekindle his relationship with you. And I said, I think your mother's getting a bum rap here. I think, I think everything is the way it seems. But the problem with kids is they only know what you tell them. And you, you see things through your filter and you believe it to be true, so you present it as the truth. He trusts you, so he treats it as the truth. If what he hears from you is what a no good, lying, cheating, manipulating, selfish person his mother is, is there any other way for him to feel? And the answer is no, and that's parental alienation, and that is bad. Uh, so I hate that that's where we are with him. What do you want to see happen in, in this family, in this situation, in your relationship with Mike? Dr. Phil, I love, I, I, I love my husband, but we cannot continue to go through with the way things have been going. It can't stay like this. It has to stop. We need to get some help. In spite of everything he's said and done, you still say you love him. I and these money problems, yes. are, are you a gambler? I was. I never was before this, this period. Okay, but now you started being, how much money have you lost? Oh, I've lost probably 70, 80 grand on the boat. I've even banned myself from the boat. Okay, so you've blown through 70 or 80 grand, which is a lot of money lot for of money. you, right? Yes, sir. A lot of money. So now you're broke. Yes, sir. Because of you? Yes. Because of your gambling? Yes, sir. And what you were screaming at her, and her son was screaming at her to do, was to sign the papers to cash in your pension plan? No. Is that right? He wanted me to cash in my pension plan, but I don't even know what those papers no, the were paperwork there. We but were he does told. want you to sign, he does want you to cash in yes, your sir. pension plan. Yes, sir. Because he was saying, Mom won't help us, we need this. And right. he told me back there. Right that we were, we were gonna use that money and right. now we're gonna lose our house because of her, right? right? <laughs> does he know that you lost the family's oh, nest yeah. egg on gambling? Yes, he's heard all this fighting going on in the house. Yeah, he didn't he's mention heard that. All. He's heard it all. Despite the fact that he's lost the family money, despite the fact that he is stalking you and accusing you and yelling at you and screaming at you and alienating your son. Yes, I do still love my husband. But he has some serious problems going on that okay. I think he needs help with. Okay, and, and what, would, what would you like to see happen here? Well, I wanted my family back, but to sit here and listen to this, because I know my life. Uh -huh. I know my life, and you're going to do this to me. What did I do to my you? My kid. This was all your the call The father I've been, here. the husband I've been all my life. And you're going to do this. Okay, talk to me for a second. Okay. What is it she's doing? She's turning this and manipulating the whole situation is what she's doing. She's turning this on me. She's still lying. She's not owning up to what she has done all her life. She is not owning up to what she is, how she has treated my son and I all our lives. She's not doing it. What would make you happy today is if she confessed. You said you want a confession, so you can start fresh. I would love a confession out of this girl. I've been waiting all my life for her to and, open up And to what me. is it you would like her to confess? I write, want write her to confess right, right now. now of who you've been with. I want to know who you slept with. Like, I want to know who you were anyone? with that October night. We were camping. My son and I were camping. <laughs> I, I want to know. I wasn't with anyone, Michael. And if you can't, I if wasn't you can't with prove, anyone. If I you can't, can't finally you be true enough. to your heart, I your have own heart been first, true. You just don't believe I me or trust me, Mike. I can't. I can't. I'm not lying this, to you, I love Mike. you more than anything in this world, and I would do anything. <laughs> I would. I would. I would forget all of this. I, I would have be nothing there for to you. tell I would you, be your Michael. I've tried to be your strength. I would not all have your let life this and you have gone done on if I cheated me. on you. I would have told you a long time ago. Instead of going through this with our family, you, you did the same thing about the lie. You went on and on oh and on God, about the God. lie. Why was that little lie so it important? Was, no, because it covered God. up something it's so It didn't. I was major. gone and went to for two hours. Sandy. Cindy, baby. Mike, I'm not lying Cindy. to you. I Cindy. cannot make you believe me. No, you can't make me. I have tried you everything. Can't make, you, you can't. I know my life. I know what I've lived. don't believe me. I know what I've lived. Okay. Um, I, I want to talk to Mike for a few minutes here. And here's what I want you to do. Robin, w would you please come up and get Cindy and have her come back there and, and sit with you for a minute? Just hang on. Robin will come and get you here. Do you know my wife, Robin? I do. Yeah. How are you? This is my wife, Mike. This is my wife, Robin. Hi, Robin. Nice to meet you. Uh, I just want her to sit, sit back there with. 
I do not believe that your wife is cheating on you. I think the last thing she wants in her life is another man. Um, tell me what you're thinking and feeling right now. I'm feeling just used all my life, just crushed. I've been an animal these two years. I've been somebody I haven't been all this my life. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted um, your wife to step away for a minute. I want to send you to step away because I, I want to talk to you undistracted. Okay. Whenever... They alerted me that some guy was showing up at all the gates with boxes of evidence and he had driven halfway across the country um, as opposed to the mail or whatever. Um, they, I, I have a rule. I, you know, being on television every day, um, I, I have to maintain boundaries. And... Anytime anybody crosses one of those boundaries, they show up at my home or they go back through everything and try to find some way to find me in my private life. That, that seals their fate. I mean, they think they go around the machine and get to me and they show up something taped to the gate at my house or something like that. That, that person, there's one thing they know for sure, they will never sit before me because that just crosses boundaries. And you driving out here and doing all of that, I said, no way, I'm talking to this guy. Uh, not gonna happen, he's crossed the boundaries. And then I saw the tape of your son. And I said, well, you know what? The son didn't cross the boundaries and he's the one that's suffering here more than anybody else. So I said, I'll do this story. I'll talk to you, I'll sit down and talk to you. But you remember before I did, I even required them to have you write me a letter yes, sir. because I had a sense how this was gonna go. And here's the letter that I had Mike write to me before I agreed to see him. <laughs> I would like to express my feelings on what I hope Dr. Phil can do for my family. That is to hear our story Tell me what he thinks our problems are and get us the right help for my son, Cindy, and I. Tell me if what I am accusing Cindy of is all in my head and help me understand what I need to do to be a better father and husband. If my accusations are true, help me understand who and what I'm dealing with so I do the right things to give my family a healthy life. I understand Dr. Phil cannot fix our problems himself However, he can give me the tools to do so. I know he will tell it like it is and guide our family in the right direction. I'm aware that I will be hearing things I may not like. However, that will not be the case. I, I will take his word like the man I am and learn from this. Thank you and your staff for your concerns for my family. Sincerely, Mike. I, I wanted an anchor before I agreed to sit down with someone that I think has a tendency to explain things away. First off, I want you to understand that even if, if you are 100% right in everything that you say about your wife, your obsessive behaviors and reactions are 100% wrong. I understand that. It's disproportionate which tells me you've lost perspective. So if somebody here is creating a problem, it's you. Okay. Now having said that, I do not believe, and I'm a pretty good judge of these things, I do not believe that your wife is cheating on you. I think the last thing she wants in her life is another man. <laughs> I just, I, I'm just telling you, I, I don't believe, that's just my professional opinion. 
and you're saying unbelievable, unbelievable. Well, th then don't believe it. No, I Th that's okay. But no. I'm telling you, okay. I do not believe that your wife is being unfaithful to you. I think you have become consumed by this. I did. I, I think did. you've I, lost I, focus on your life, and I, I, I think that it has gotten to the point that it is delusional. I don't think you need her to be perfect to be happy, but you've convinced yourself that you have to have a confession from her on something in order for you to move on. And that is just not true. What I'm interested in is what's really motivating this, because it is not her telling you about a party a couple of days later than she could have. That is not what's triggered this. It's not that she's cheating with somebody because she isn't. You should be saying, then what the hell has got me so upset here? Because I don't care what you guys say, there's a part of you that thinks he's kind of a nice guy. There's a part of you that thinks he's kind of charming. Yes, no, no, there is. What I fear I create, you are destroying the family you think you are fighting so hard to maintain. You are the problem. Just think about that. If, if it's not her, if it has nothing to do with her, what could get you so out of control? I know. Because we, we agreed that your reaction is, a, is even, if what, even if it's true, your reaction is wrong, correct? Yes. So what is it about you that you're I, having such a terrible reaction? People get, they get divorces this, every day and don't go through all of this. This girl is ready to walk out of my life in 12 days when I taped her, okay? She was ready to walk out of my life with my son like she did when I was younger. Okay, now answer my question. Okay, I don't want to now be answer my, my question. son. If it's not her, if it's not her, what is it about you that would make this happen? If you say it's in my head, evidently. Well, but I have what a about it? I mean, were, did have you had trauma in your life? Have you, have yeah, you, have you been this traumatized me? Before? I was no, before no, this. no, before this, no, I have. You not. were just peachy. No, I, I feel like I've been one hell of a man, one happy man. I wake up happy. I go to bed happy. I just no. I, I, listen, seriously, no, I get I'm that that hard. is a I'm, part okay. of who he is. Because I don't care what you guys say. There's a part of you that thinks he's kind of a nice guy. There's a part of you that thinks he's kind of charming. Yes, no, no, there is. There is a part of him that I'll bet you, if he gets past this, you have the ability to be a good egg. You got an ability to be a good egg. But I'm gonna tell you what I think's okay. going on, okay? Yes, and you can poo-poo it and okay. decide that I'm in on it with the doctor and that I'm a quack and <laughs> no. all of that, or maybe I'm not really a doctor, I just play one on TV. Um, but there's something called a personality disorder that's a cluster. A personality disorder is an enduring pattern of inner experience. That's important because, so this comes to the outside in, you're not reacting to the world, it's inner experience. It's pervasive, it's inflexible. And it starts in early adulthood, it's stable over time, and it leads to distress. Now, we're talking about something that comes from the inside out. I mean, you're not reacting to something. It, it came from the inside out. And one of the things in that cluster is paranoid personality disorder. Number one, suspects without sufficient basis that others are exploiting, harming, or deceiving him or her. Number two, preoccupied with unjustified doubts about the loyalty and trustworthiness of friends or associates. Number three, reluctant to confide in others because of an unwarranted fear that they could use information against him. Four, reads hidden, demeaning, threatening meanings into benign remarks or events. Persistently bears grudges. Six, perceives attacks on his or her character or reputation are not apparent to others. Seven, has recurrent suspicions without justification regarding fidelity of spouse or sexual partner. You're about 6.5 out of seven. I don't, uh, I don't see any of these things being a real part of my life other than these last two years. I just don't see it.
you believe what you're saying, I, I don't think you're making it up. I think you are 100% convinced of the things you say. Yes, sir. Is it possible that something has happened that's caused you to view the world through a filter that distorts it oh, for you? Oh, anything's possible. I, I, anything's possible. I've always believed in that. Anything's possible. It's never too late. That's, that's just my beliefs. And if I'm right, this would be on my short list of considerations. Okay. And if that's true and you got treated for this, even if you did it preventatively, like your chlamydia, <laughs> then maybe all of a sudden you would start to see things differently. Is it possible that you could do some work on yourself and change the way you perceive things. Because if you perceive what you, you believe what you're saying, I, I don't think you're making it up. I think you are 100% convinced of the things you say. Yes, sir. I think you are convinced that what you're doing with your son is proper and appropriate. I think you believe it all to be true. Yes, sir. But if it's not, and you could change your point of view, it would really give you what I think is your one and only chance to do two things. Keep this marriage together, and two, you would have an opportunity to preserve a relationship with and access to your son. Because if you don't change what you're doing, she's gonna be gone, and he's gonna be gone. As our gift here to you, I am prepared to bring you extensive, thorough, multifaceted diagnostic workups and evaluations from which will flow appropriate treatment for you as an individual and you as a couple and a family as, as my gift to you. Okay. And I think you need some help and support as a woman and I want to provide that for you. So you're gonna have a lot of work to do just like he is. Okay. This isn't all about him. Now, when I say I'm gonna get you some help, the first thing I wanna do is fly you to Dallas, Texas. Okay. I want you to go to the PNP Center, which is one of the leading diagnostic and treatment centers in the country. They're gonna evaluate you neurologically, biochemically, psychologically, hormonally. They're gonna look at every aspect of who you are. Okay. This is our gift. Thank you. Really, to your son. Thank you so much. Recently, my wife Robin announced the first program from her new foundation, When Georgia Smiled, the Robin McGraw Revelation Foundation. Now, it is called the Aspire Initiative, and it is very exciting. It's an interactive educational program that is designed to stop domestic violence. It's free and it is available in both English and Spanish. And it's designed for three different age groups, each with its own custom curriculum. Tweens, teens and young adults, and for adults. Now look, this can be used individually in the privacy of your own home, or it can be facilitated by an instructor like a school teacher or a counselor or a youth education director in a church. Now it's broken into three parts. The real deal on abuse where it is all defined and explained, then it's stop it before it starts, which is the prevention section. And last and most importantly, take action, where I teach you how to exit an abusive relationship safely and how to stay safe once you are out. This curriculum is filled with quizzes to test your knowledge of the difference between love and abuse and I also teach you how to recognize the excuses abusers give to keep you in the relationship. This is a fraction of the wonderful content Aspire has to offer. And don't forget, it's free. You can find it at my foundation website, which is www.whengeorgiasmiled.org. And of course, you can also find it at drphil.com. And Robin and her team have also designed a new app. And let me tell you, this is so cool. This is for your smartphone. It's called the Aspire News app. And it's been built for the smartphone, and it's a major development in domestic violence safety. 
It's the first of its kind, never been done before. The Aspire News app is disguised as an everyday app, so if your abuser takes your phone from you, it won't stick out. It has a function that I call the go button that you can activate the moment you are in danger. Once activated, it will send a pre-typed or pre-recorded audio message to multiple trusted pre-selected contacts or even 911 saying that you are in trouble. Once the go button is activated, your phone will also start recording audio of everything that is going on in the room. So now you have actual audio evidence of threats or abuse. So be sure and leave on your phone's location service because many of the functions in this app you'll need, including locating the nearest shelters. There are also articles on domestic violence and other educational tools readily available for you at all times. Also included is a link to the Aspire Initiative curriculum. So Robin and I are dedicated to standing up and helping anyone who has or is being abused and will continue to make it a mission for the both of us. So I want to thank all of my guests today and encourage any victims of domestic violence to reach out and get the Aspire initiative and the new Aspire app immediately. And remember, it's completely free. Free. Very cool stuff. Thanks for being here. So long. <laughs>